You know, you know, I, I just don't, I just don't get, you know, how some of these reliable sources that FIFO and Sean Ross Sapp, you know, get info from and PW Insider and others get information from because it, it's almost like they... It's almost like they change the story or the wording of the stories, you know, time in and time out. You know, with the whole oh Vince McMahon was whole all heavenly involved all you know heavenly involved with creative on Raw last night, and you know he he's the reason for the rewrites during the show and before the show and da 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 da, and it's like look, we get it. When something seems bad, the easiest person or thing to blame is what, you know, caused those kind of issues in the past. You know, that's the most obvious go-to. You know, there's no doubt. But it seems that over time, like I said, they these reports change their tune. And now all of a sudden I'm hearing, you know, comments along the lines of, well, you know, this report is now saying it feels like he was in charge or you know, it's, you know, if, you know, it felt like he was in charge or, you know, he was only in Gorilla just giving direction but not on a headset, stuff like that. And it's like, or giving suggestions, you know, it's like you hear all these different narratives change with all, from all these sources given to all these different outlets like WrestleVotes, Fightful, and PW Insider and, and, and so on. And look. I'm not discrediting Fightful and Sean Ross Sapp or PW Insider and Mike Johnson or Wade Keller or, you know, or Russell Votes or any of them, okay? I'm not discrediting them, you know, whatsoever. But I have to, I have to ask, you know, I have to ask them and anybody else, you know, that has sources within WWE or AEW or wherever, how truly reliable are your sources, especially at this time of year? How truly reliable are they? Are they reliable? Or are they just saying things to get a reaction out of you? Because I think, honestly, they're trying to get a reaction out of you. Because one thing somebody pointed out is, how can Vince McMahon, you know, how can Vince McMahon go from being on CNBC in the morning with that interview, well, not CNBC, but in that interview, you know, that he had alongside Ari Emanuel, his new boss. You know, how can he go from that to going to Raw and deciding to do rewrites? It, you know, it's like, it didn't make sense. There, you know, there's a missing connecting piece, if you will, to that whole scenario. And my thought was this. This was my thought. Um, I, if I was to put the blame on Vince... I would say I put it on his filter, Bruce Pritchard. That's who I put it on. I would say this. I would say this. I believe, and it is my opinion, that Bruce Pritchard probably was in contact with Vince, you know, you know, throughout the day. Maybe Vince did have an office there, maybe he didn't, you know, you know, people are saying he did and that's where a lot of information was coming from, but really, why now? you know, and everything. I mean, it's understandable that it's WrestleMania, it's the Raw Aftermania. Of course, he's going to want to take part in it. You know, I get that. But, you know, again, it feels more like, to me, it could have been Bruce that was relaying a lot of the information to Hunter. That's what I think. And part of the information, which was suggestions and input, if you will, you know, basically probably was to kind of, you know, you know, because, again, as I've mentioned before, these, you know, they just went through one heck of a week leading up to Mania, and now you got a post-Mania, and not everybody is, you know, you know, going to be on board to want to go back out there and perform at such a high level, if you will. I mean, some are, because that's how they are, you know, and everything, but some will not, you know, do that to be at such a high level. You know, some will not want to do that because they want to have a break. You know, they want to basically you know, can relax their body, because WrestleMania, in a sense, is like one of the only times, you know, before and afterwards, in a sense, you know, unless they have some house shows to do, uh, to basically, you know, heal up the body a bit before they get back on the road. So, 
So to me, I'm thinking because he probably didn't have, you know, the roster, you know, that he wanted at that time, you know, ready, you know, to go. You know, Hunter probably asked, you know, Vince suggestions. I'll probably ask Bruce, you know, what, you know, is Vince around? Can I talk to him? And Bruce probably got in contact or Bruce probably said, hey, look, Vince probably knew you were going to need help. This is your first Raw after Mania and everything. And so he made some suggestions and maybe part of those suggestions were to kind of have rewrites on the ready. Because you can't tell me, you can't tell me that as much as I like, as much as I'm a fan of Triple H, and I am, you can't tell me that Paul Levesque never had rewrites on the ready, you know, during his run as, you know, head of creative before this whole Endeavor deal and everything took place. You can't tell me he never had rewrites on the ready because he probably did. And he knew he'd probably need them just in case, you know, certain scenarios happened. And guess what? Tonight was one of those situations to where maybe he felt, you know what, this is a cooling off period right now. We just came off of Mania. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to basically take a page out of my father-in-law's playbook and, and use some rewrites to, you know, to basically, you know, make things a little easier, you know, and stuff for, for the wrestlers, you know, and everything, you know, as well as a little bit more, um, I guess you could say unpredictable in a sense for the fans, but obviously the way he pulled it off, you know, if, if that's what happened. You know, obviously if he pull, obviously the way he pulled it off, you know, there's a good chance it felt more like a Vince thing. And look, and look, I mean, I, I get it. I get it. Like I said, Vince is easy to blame, you know, and everything because, oh, he, you know, he goes on an interview, which is seen by everybody. And he's basically quoted by saying, you know, he will be involved at a higher level, but just not in like the trenches, like not in the weeds. And everything like he used to. And I'm, yeah, you know, he's taking what he said, you know, he's basically essentially saying the same thing or similar to what he said, you know, about a couple of years ago when he said the same thing about Bischoff and Heyman. But here's the thing, though. He owned WWE at that time. He could say that and get away with, you know, going back on it. Here, he can't really do that anymore. Because now, his boss will get on him or anybody, you know, out, you know, a you know, below his boss that's above Vince will get on him. You know, they will. So, to me, so to me, I look at the fact that, you know, I believe the reason Vince is being blamed and the reason these sources are telling Fightful and PW Insider and WrestleVotes and all of them that, oh yeah, Vince was there, is because of the fact that they're covering up the, to me, they're covering up the fact that it was Hunter. That everything fell on Hunter and fell on Bruce. That's my opinion. That it was more Hunter and Bruce than Vince. That's why it felt very Vince-like. Because they were just taking ideas that Vince probably suggested and ran with them. Vince probably, like I said, talked to Bruce, told Bruce, hey, you know, I know this is my son-in-law's first Raw after Mania. I know he's overwhelmed right now. Help him out. Here's some ideas. Go with it. And maybe he took Hunter aside and said, look, I know it. You know, maybe he said the same thing to him. He said, look, I know it's your first Raw after Mania. I know you're a little overwhelmed. So I'm going to help Bruce help you out. And, you know, here's some ideas, you know, to help to ease, make it easier for you. And, you know, there you go. And that's just my opinion. As far as morale being down, I don't think morale is down. I don't think it's down. If anything, honestly, I think so. You know, honestly, I think a lot of these superstars, just to be honest with you, I think a lot of these superstars, you know, they just like to mess with us. They do. I'm not lying with you. I think a lot of these superstars like to mess with us. They, they, they hear, I mean, you can't tell me they don't pay attention to what we say when we tag them. Sometimes on Twitter or social media. You can't tell me they don't see what we're saying. And by seeing what we're saying, they, they're just going along with the ride. They're just messing with us. They're like, oh, okay. They think I'm being mistreated. They think I'm not having, they think I shouldn't be there. You know, I'll go along with the gag. And I'll go along, I'll go along with that. 
you know, I'll play along with that. You know, I'll tease them. I'll manipulate. I'll, I'll manipulate them, and that's what they're doing. And you're falling for it. You are falling for it. You see, the thing is, when you get down to it, nobody's perfect. Okay, nobody is perfect. No matter what ave avenue of employment, you know, you know that they're in. No matter what position of power they have, creatively or whatever, nobody's perfect. Has Vince had a reputation for ruining Raws and Smackdowns and pay-per-views in the past? Yes, there's no doubt. But, here's the thing, he can't really do that as much anymore. Yes, on a higher level he might be more involved, but I got a feeling as the months go on and more information comes out about this deal, this merger and everything, you know, uh, you know, uh, is, you know that's happening, you know, with UFC, Endeavor, and WWE, that the more information we get, the more the details come out, the more the hurdles are overcome and stuff like that that need to be overcome, I guarantee you that's going to occupy Vince's time more so than being, you know, a higher up and creative. That's what's going to happen. And I got a feeling it might happen this week. You got a feeling it might happen this week. And, and, and look, I know people are worried about SmackDown like I said, I don't think we have to worry about SmackDown that much. I mentioned this in my earlier video. I don't think we have to worry about that. Again, and again, I say that because, you know, they, Vince is going to be more focused on getting this deal completely finalized and everything, getting all the X's and O's dotted, that he's going to leave SmackDown in the hands of his son-in-law and maybe Bruce and let them run it, you know, to the best of their abilities because at least from, let's say, a mental capacity... They will have time to have, you know, uh, relaxed, you know, you know, they will have time to have, have relaxed, get the facilities back together, and move on. You know, and you also got to realize this too. Unlike, you know, unlike Raw, which is on USA, a cable network, you know, and then later on, about a month later on Peacock, a streaming network, SmackDown is on Fox. And yeah, I understand. That's not an excuse for what could be a... Uh, for bad SmackDowns we've had in the past, and potentially another one this Friday. I'm not saying that. But I've noticed more so than ever that since Triple H has been in charge of creative, he's put more emphasis on SmackDown than Raw. Because he knows he's got, you know, you know, bigger sponsors, more... He got, he's got bigger sponsors involved, you know, with the Fox presentation of WWE than USA. So he knows he's got to put on a good product. He does. Um, but, you know, to me, getting back to what I was saying, you know, I, I have to wonder, you know, how reliable these sources that, you know, report to Fightful, PW Insider, or WrestleVotes, and anybody else really, really are. Because, again, you know, like I mentioned, you know, it seems that the story is changing over over the pa over the course of the past several hours. Again, you know, at first it's like, oh, he was uh, heavily involved. He was doing the rewrites, da da da. And now it's going to, now it's going to, to you know, it's going along the facts of well, it felt like he was there. It felt like Vince was involved. And it's like, who are you to believe? Who are you who who's telling the truth? Who's giving the rightful information? Or are they giving you that information just to throw you off because of the fact that, hey, they don't want you to know that maybe it really is Triple H and mostly Bruce Pritchard. And maybe they're doing it because they want to see what kind of a reaction you'll get if it's known and heard that Vince is involved. And obviously they're doing their job because they're getting the reaction they want out of you guys. They're getting you yelling and eff you know, and effing you know, you know, effing up, you know, your videos, you know, and you know what I mean by effing up, you know, the, F, you know, F, the four letter word in some cases, but you know, the, you know, they're, they're getting what they want. They're getting you to react in a way that they know the more you talk about this, the more attention it gets on the product and the more it impresses Endeavor. Because if Endeavor sees, hey, Vince, why are these guys talking about you being there when you really weren't and you were just giving notes to your son-in-law? You know, that's probably what's going on. That's what it's about. They're getting that reaction out of you. They are. 
They're getting you to talk about Raw after Mania, maybe not in the way that you were hoping you would, but they're getting you to do it. And now, as time passes on, we're starting to notice a change in the story at times. You know, and that change is, hey, it feels like Vince was there, and that's it. And again, I don't believe any of this negative, you know, this negative morale, morale going down, things felt like they were nuked. No, I don't, I don't believe any of that crap. I really don't. You know, I, I think, I think what's gonna, I think what's happening is these sources, like I said, are throwing you guys off, and they're doing it because obviously words getting to Paul Levesque, Triple H, getting into his ear that hey, you know, we have some uh, moles looking around, giving out information that they shouldn't, what do we do? And maybe Paul Levesque and his team's like, hey, tell them this is what's happening, throw, tell them something that will throw them off, maybe even if it pisses them off, th tell them something. And maybe that's what ha happened. That's just my opinion. But I do not believe for a second, you know, that Vince was fully, fully involved with this like he used to be. I truly, truly don't. I think it's more of an exaggeration. I think it's the fact that he's e he's an easy target to go to, and that's you know that's uh, you know that's everybody's right to believe, and I agree he is and should be an easy target because of what he's done. I'm not against that, but I firmly believe if you look at it from the outside, like I have. I mean, I'm still a wrestling fan, but I haven't watched Raw regularly or SmackDown regularly, you know, for quite some time, unless it's you know a very important one or one people are talking about saying. Ooh, you got to see this, you know, just to see what happened. You know, I haven't watched it regularly, you know, like I used to, which is a benefit to me because I can be on the outside looking in and seeing how manipulative a lot of fans have, you know, uh, a lot of fans are, you know, uh, uh, you know, I guess, it, I, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, you know, on the outside, I'm, I'm watching has fans and insiders, in a sense, are uh, being manipulated in ways that I that I can honestly see is just them, you know, having, you know, being pulled, is basically WWE and even the stars pulling at the strings. You know, they, they're puppet mastering them with all this, you know, as one put, as I think Alex said one time. So, so no, I, I don't, I don't truly believe Vince was truly involved. I think he gave suggestions in his own way, filtered them through Bruce Pritchard, maybe you know, he had Triple H, maybe he suggested to Bruce and Triple H together or separately, hey, you know, do some, have some rewrites on the ready just in case. And that's probably what happened. I don't think there were any rewrites done during the show. I think they just said that to throw you off, to get a reaction out of you guys. And guess what? They succeeded. They succeeded in getting the reaction they wanted out of you guys. And you know what? If I'm you, just a suggestion, next time, Reevaluate your sources before you get your information. If I'm Sean Ross Sapp, if I'm Mike Johnson, if I'm Wade Keller, if I'm Fightful, if I'm WrestleVolt, if I'm PW Insider, if I'm Dave Meltzer, if I'm Brian Alvarez, you know what I do? I look at my source. I, you know, uh, when I get in contact with my sources, I ask them, "Are you telling?" Uh, the first thing I'll ask, the first thing I would ask them is, "Are you telling me the truth here? Is this legit, or are you just trying to throw me off the trail?" You know what? You know, are you trying to throw me off the trail, trail of what's really going on, or is this legit? That's what they need to start doing, because honestly, if you just keep taking people at, you know, the word and face value, whatever you want to call them, it's going to come back to bite you. Because well, we are entering an age that I don't think is going to be favorable to any of the in, uh, any of the wrestling news outlets. It's not going to be favorable to Fightful. It's not going to be favorable to uh, WrestleVolta PW Insider. Because I guarantee when this deal goes final in the halfway point of this year, I guarantee you, I guarantee you that whatever the name of the new parent company, or the new, whatever the name of the spinoff company is that's going to house UFC and WWE, I guarantee you, you guys will not be able to get as much information as you used to. You know, I guarantee it because they're gonna, you know, there's gonna be changes internally in the in the offices of WWE and everything with this new company. And if this, if this new board, if this new board, which is gonna consist of a 
six members selected by Endeavor and five by WWE. And the Endeavor members outnumber WWE, you know, in that matter. But if this new board of 11 people, you know, comes together and one of the priorities is, is you know, you know, if one of the priorities is, hey, you know, we need to stop these leaks from happening. We need to find out who the moles are because they're, they're going to look through everything. They're going to look through, okay, why, why are these people getting this information that they shouldn't be getting, you know, about what's going on eternally in the, in the company? You know, why, why this? Why that? You know, they're going to look into that. That would be one of the first things they look into. Maybe not the major, major first thing, but it will be one of the first things. And that, to me, could spell trouble. And I think that's why, now that I think about it, that's why maybe we're getting thrown off. That's why I don't believe some of these sources, you know, that Fightful and PW Insider and Russell Volks are getting in contact with lately, because they realize, hey, you know, you know, hey, you know, someone's ratting us out to Triple H and his team, so, you know, we, we don't know what's really going on anymore. We're just tell them what we know or tell them what we're, we're getting. You know, maybe they're realizing that they're getting ratted out out and everything, but they're just taking whatever information they can, or they can gather and give it to Sean, give it to Wade, give it to Mike, to, you know, to see maybe if there's going to be, maybe there is any validation to it or not, and, um, yeah, I, and yeah, you know, I think, you know, they're, they're, they're being thrown off just as much as, you know, I honestly think the, the, the sort, the, uh, these, these news sites are, I really do. I really think they're being thrown off just as much. I could be wrong, but I mean, think about it. Think about it, really, guys. It's like, like I mentioned earlier, why is the story now changing to where now, instead of heavenly involved, it felt like he was there? Why is that narrative changing? It don't make sense to me. It really don't. So, whatever's going on, I guarantee you. The sources that you guys rely on, that Fightful and Sean Ross Sapp, Mike Johnson, PW Inside, Wade Keller, and all of them rely on, I can almost guarantee you this. I can almost guarantee you this. They are either being told to say these things because they are being thrown off themselves, or they're being told to say these things to throw you off because they probably got rat they probably got, you know, pulled aside, you know, ratted out and were told by Levesque or whoever, hey, Stop leaking information that nobody needs to know about what's going on eternally. And if you go and if they keep asking, just make something up. That's what I think. That's what I think. Because again, why is the story changing? Why is it changing? That's what I want to know. You know. So to me, I would not let this get to you. I would just say, look, you know, I I, I, would, I mean honestly, this is what I would, and I do apologize. It's early. And everything, and I have to get ready for work in a little while. I'm still waking up. Probably try to get a little bit more sleep before you know I have to wake up officially in a few hours. Um, but to me, but to me, I, I look at it like this. You know, to me, I look at it like this. Like I mentioned earlier, I would double check with your sources, ask them whether or not what they're giving you is legit, or they just, or they don't know what's going on themselves. And everything, and this is what they were told. You know, I would ask them that. Are you? I would ask them. You know, straight up. Are you being honest with me, or are you trying to throw me off? You know, that that's my honest suggestion there. But I would also kind of, I would kind of re, you know, over time, I would kind of keep check, you know, rechecking, you know, daily. You know, I wouldn't say day daily, but I would say hourly if when you get a chance. You know, every hour or bi-hourly, you know, I would check, you know, to see if there's any change in a, in in the story. And if you know, and if I'm you, you know, and I see a change in the story, like the wordings change, the descriptions change, you know, especially from the source that you know originally reported, that's when I should start being suspicious. Like, okay, what's really going on here? What's really the truth? Because if you know, the, if the story is changing from, you know, what was reported originally of Vince being, you know, you know, heavenly involved in everything to felt like he was involved, then you really have to wonder, okay, what's truly going on? What's really going on? Who's telling us the truth or her, who's, you know, jerking our tails to throw us off? That's what you need to start thinking about. And again, if I'm Sean Ross Sapp, 
If I'm Mike Johnson, if I'm Wade Keller, from now on, you know, seeing that the story's changing, you know what I do? I double check with my sources and I ask them straight up, are you telling me something legit and truthful? Or do you not know what's really going on either? Or are you just trying to throw me off? I ask them, one, I ask them those three questions. I ask them that. And if they can't give me a straight answer on either of it, then I know, okay, I'm not going to get an answer, so we don't know what's really going on. And that's about it. And again, like I said, if I'm all these wrestling news sites, I enjoy this while I can because once this merger happens in July, there's no doubt that it will be one of the main priorities they make to shut down any leaks of information you know, from within the company to the point that it's going to make Fightful, PW Insider, and everybody else, you know, basically be like regular wrestling fan fans and YouTubers. It's going to make them be like, well, I used to know about this and everything in WWE, but now that my source has been cut off, I can only give you my opinion from what I see. And that's it. That'll be about it. But, yeah, I think it's getting harder now to believe what the dirt sheets say. Or even the, even the sources that the dirt sheets get, if you will, or get information from. I think it's getting harder to believe it. And I think, I think everybody should kind of contemplate that and realize, you know what? You know, I don't know who's telling the truth. I'm just going to go by my gut feeling. And if your gut feeling is, hey, Vince was involved big time, heavenly and all that, that's fine. But if your gut feeling is, hey, it feels like it was Vince, but maybe I'm wrong and maybe Hunter had an off night or maybe Vince suggested these things that were, you know, reminded people of what he's done to Hunter and Hunter just ran with them. Who knows? Uh, who knows? You know, if that, that's your feeling too, you know, go for it. But, I, you know, honestly, I think, you know, we should be more careful about, you know, what these sources are telling us because, yeah, it just feels like there's some kind of disconnect here, if you know what I'm saying. But uh, let me know what your thoughts are, guys, and I am out.